anesthesia for IOM, Jiva or balanced anesthesia. First, let's ask the question, what is anesthesia? Well, really, it's a Greek word used to describe the sleep by the mandrake plant. Descarides used that term. Oliver Wendell later used it to describe sleep by ether. Today, when we say anesthesia, we, need, we mean and we need that we need to have a patient amnestic, the patient having no pain or anterior and the patient unconscious, and the patient does not move because of the surgeon require that. Now, what do we monitor? We're monitoring EEG, brainstem, sensory, and motor evoke potential. Motor evoke potential is the monitor more sensitive to anesthetic agents, and accordingly, we are going to gear in that direction. I mentioned that immobility is part of the anesthesia component. And the patient, when the patient moved during surgery, is moved due to a reflex, not because the patient awake. So what happens? A stimulation occur in the periphery, go to the spinal cord, go to the muscle as a reflex. Patient sleep doesn't know what's going on. What can we do to minimize or prevent that reflex from occurring. We could give muscle relaxant. Giving muscle relaxant will stop the reflex, but at the same time can affect motor evoke potential. In some part of the world, the team utilize partial muscle relaxation because they are afraid of the patient not uh, moving or moving. We could use a propofol inhalation agent to work on the spinal cord that will create a situation of no movement. However, to do that with the propofol, you need four times sedation, and that can affect the signals. Inhalation can be used as lower levels and concentration. The Third way is to give narcotic. Narcotic will dull the stimulation going to the spinal cord. And if we utilize the synergy between them, between the uh, narcotic and propofol and narcotic inhalation, we'll be able to get the best result, the patient to prevent the patient from movement with the least effect of the propofol and inhalation agents on the signal itself. Now, let's take a look on the situation. We have a four points, known pain, unconscious, amnesia, and immobility, which you see on the left side. And we see on the top receptors. There are multiple receptors, and each receptor works differently to produce one of these four components of anesthesia. Let's take now of the drugs, propofol. The propofol work on GABA receptors. We could see it. With the include in the circle, red circle, and you can see the propofol work very well on GABA to create unconscious and amnesia, but not much for analgesia and the immobility not very strong at all. So there are limitation and they have to the use of propofol. And if we use very high dose of it, then we may have a decrease in the signals, both in sensory and motor evoke potentials. How about inhalations? The inhalation agents, <clears throat> they work on the GABA, similar to the propofol, and give us unconscious and amnesia, which both are very good, but not much analgesia, and uh, they give us some um, uh, immobility. However, the uh, inhalation agents work on glycine receptors. The glycine receptors can give us a very strong immobility. 
So that's why using small inhalation agents can provide glycine receptor to create immobility without much effect on the other part of the signals like the cortical and motor evoke tension if we use small doses of the inhalation agents. Let's take another drug, dexmedetomidine, that central alpha 2 receptor work only to create unconscious and some pain, but no amnesia whatsoever and no immobility. So you could see this drug different from the other two. Uh, there's no one drug over here who is complete drug uh, for anesthetic at this time. Look about the dex using at higher doses. You have effect on the potentials too, and we have to be careful. However, in the first hour and a smaller dose of probably not much effect. How about the use of ketamine? Well, ketamine is an MDA receptors and work on it to give us very good analgesia, a little bit unconscious, little amnesia, but no immobility whatsoever. The good things about ketamine, it can give us enhancement to the signals, enlarge of the signals, which can be used to uh, get better signals in patients with very small signals. Uh, and that's very advantageous for that. So now we looked on some of the drugs, the different and the inhalation. And let's say what is shortcoming in the TIVA and how can we supplement it? Shortcoming of the C of the TIVA include the patient IV get disconnected, obstructed, or uh, infiltration of the under sub Q. Uh, that can lead to awareness of the surrounding, can lead to patient movement because not much. Uh, uh, block of the reflex. It's a problem when there is a chronic pain and there is a problem with the hypergesia for some of the patients. The worst for the TIVA is the high dose of propofol, which can lead to uh, a prolonged sleep at the end of the surgery, which then can create anxiety for the surgeon because they are not able to examine the patient very fast like a spinal surgery patient or intracranial patient. Most of the time, also the TIVA, the problem because uh, anesthesiologists, they don't use very high dose narcotic and utilize the synergy, which can decrease the propofol. What can we do as alternative or supplement to the uh, TIVA? We can give some inhalation agent, as mentioned earlier, 0.3 to 0.5 MAC can give us immobility, can supplement and add to the amnesia and, and, uh, and unconsciousness and decrease the amount of propofol. Ketamine can be used, especially if the signal is small and uh, weak, and the same with etamidate. Metahexital can be used also and DEX can be used in patients with a chronic pain. Lidocaine can be used to uh, enhance the or decrease the amount of anesthesia uh, required for narcotic or for propofol. At the same time, not much effect on the signals. And so is Asmanol. So as we could see that we should be selecting our drugs to work at different receptors, which can give us the best condition for anesthesia for the patient safely, and the best condition for the IOM without hurting the patient, and at the same time provide the best condition for the surgeon to provide the surgery. That should be our goal, and there is no one single suit fits all, we should be selecting to the cases. In pediatric, we may need only TIVA, and in very old patients, maybe the same, but we should be selective. Thank you very much for your listening.